Um, a lot of guys just play video games with me. I mean, it's chill. Like, this is more interesting than playing a game. As you can probably tell, this is a little bit different of a video. So I wanted to add some context at the beginning here. So there's this website called eGirlGG where you can pay money to have a girl play a video game with you. And I thought it might be interesting content to give that a try, but for coding. I kind of luck sacked because the first girl that I messaged was not only okay with it, but actually wanted to learn how to code and she was willing to do it for free. She also told me that she tried a Java class a while ago, but actually ended up failing out of it before getting to for loops or finishing for loops. So what you are about to watch is some of the highlights of the live stream that I did with her, where I tried to do a better job of teaching her how to code. So this is my philosophy whenever doing like teaching people coding or they te learn coding is I'm gonna mm -hmm. show you some things and then you try applying that with like a little exercise sort of thing. That way you can like cement it. Um, so okay, so you... the first one's Hello World, yeah. Yeah, let's do Hello World then. Do you know what this is called? This is text, but what do programmers call this? No, <laughs> I don't know. Does this does this oh, sound familiar? Oh, string that, that yeah, string so... boolean or whatever. I remember boolean because it sounded weird. Okay, and what is boolean? I don't know. Boolean is true or false. What's a foo? So foo just this is my name. So this is the okay. what I call it, and this is what I assign it equal to. Okay. So then I can reference it later. So what this what do you think is gonna happen if I say print foo? It's gonna print Cali. Exactly. Right? It doesn't yeah, print okay. foo. It doesn't. It prints the actual value of it. Because there's no quotation marks around, or. Exactly. Is that why? Okay, okay. So if I did it like this, what gets printed? Foo. Exactly. So this is... <gasps> oh, okay. okay. If you, what I want you to try now is create two variables and then, I guess, multiply them and print out the result. Is multiply the little star sign? Yes. Okay. Two variables? Mm-hmm. Just like... Create two new variables for me. Wait, ooh. Does that work? That's two. Yeah. That's two numbers. Those are that's a float oh. and an int. That's a good start. I want you to also Wait. stick them into a variable. A ver. Oh, you mean like name it and then mm -hmm. like name a number? Okay, okay, like like this. Exactly, and do two oh, variables. Fuck. <laughs> oh, 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 okay, 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 okay. Yeah, is that it's like like that? Exactly. Can you get two numbers from the user and add them together? Two numbers from the user? Mm hmm Okay. Does that work? All right, so if I were to pass in, let's say, five here, and then if I pass in five here, what do you think the result's going to be? Hopefully 10. Fuck. <laughs> Well, why do you think it did that? Because they're separate. Kind yes. of. So this is this is something I didn't explicitly say yet, yet, and so it's it's kind of hard to get. But when you get an input like this, it's always a string. So that's your hint. Ah. Uh, num okay. one and num two is equivalent of us doing five plus five. So the okay, difference okay. between it's a difference between this and this. And then would that work? Does this? Well, let's give it a try and let's see. So I'll put five and I'll put five and we get okay. 10. The next thing I want you to do is take a string from the user and tell tell them whether their string is greater than 10. The length of the string is greater than okay. 10 and tell them it's a long word. Otherwise, tell them it's a short word. Can I do like if word more than 10? Can you I do that? What makes you think you wouldn't be able to do that? Is word a number? I mean, because it's a length, so it is a number, right? You tell me. I think so. Oh, well, whatever. I'll try it. Main if word sin invalid syntax. Wait, do I have to put parentheses around it or something? No. So 
I, th this one's going to be maybe hard for you to catch, but okay. count the number of parentheses you have on line 30. Oh, not enough. Right? Yeah. Will this, be, will this fix it? Let's, let's try it. Give Are me a word. Is that ten words? <laughs> I I don't know, but I think you coded it correctly. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Without me telling you how this works, can you guess how this this piece of code functions? I think it's like they check if it's above ten. Uh, wait. They check if it's above ten, and if it's above ten, they check if it's above fifteen. And if it's not above fifteen, they'll print the. This is a long word. If it's above 15, they'll print this is a really long word. But if it's below 10, they'll print automatically it's a short word, right? Yes. So, and oh, exactly. So, it's going to start at this state at the very top. And if that condition is false, yeah. it considers the next one and then it considers the last one. It goes in order. If it's false, mm -hmm. but then if it's above 10, then what if it's what if it's like 16 and it's true? Then it wouldn't consider the next one, right? I, I basically gave you an impossible uh, condition. <laughs> so, so yes, oh. if you walk through the logic, if you walk through the logic, it only ever gets to here if this is false. Yeah, okay, okay. Which I thought, which I thought you it can... would be like, okay, never mind. Yep. So which implies that the number is less than 10. So if I've made it here, you know the number is less than 10. But then this condition is always going to be false then. Yeah. If, okay. Exactly. So then you should like flip the 15 and 10 around if you want it to, it to work, right? Yeah. Give it a try. So how would you, how would you fix this code to make it work? Like how it looks like it should work. This would be 15. Oh, and then it would work like this, right? Let's run yeah. it. Let's see. I don't know a word that's like 15 long. I do. <laughs> True and false or true i don't even true. know what the answer to this was by the way so true? we're gonna have to run and what see. The, the <laughs> there. true and false or true true it would print true so you think, right you think this is going to be true so what i want yeah. you to do is try simplifying this each part and show me what the simplifications are true true or true is true and then I guess or true again is true. Okay. And then it'd be and false. So it'd be false. So it's actually false is what you're thinking? Wait, 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 wait. I thought, wait, okay. So <laughs> it was true. So this is, the, or this true, is what we so started with. True. Yeah. And then, okay, so true and false. So it would be false or true, which would be true, but then it'd be not. So it's false i in my head it makes sense to me that any and false would become false and then that would make it not false and then it would be true so the final result will be true right let's run it is it false uh... oh my god i actually think you had it when you simplified it so oh i did yeah i think i think you did and then you we kind of reverted when we go back but yeah so if we okay, so this... it was true and then and false is false or true and then it became true okay and then this becomes okay. true exactly what you said and then this and then this, this pesky guy at the beginning is just gonna revert it and then okay yeah that's that and what do you think the result's gonna be of this print Twenty six. <laughs> You're so <laughs> hesitant. Okay, because I'm scared that it's gonna be like one hundred, one thousand, two hundred thirty-three again. I impressed myself, honestly. So there's actually this famous problem that they give to people to see if for software engineering interviews, it's okay. called Fizz Buzz, and okay. you did this like very well, very quickly. So I want to give you fizz buzz now and see if you're ready for a software engineering job. So if I get if I get this right, you're saying I can get hired at Amazon. You know what? I would not be surprised if Amazon asked fizz buzz in one of their interviews. 
but they also okay. might ask some other things. Okay, okay. All right, so this I'm is ready. how FizzBuzz works. So we are going to go from 1 to 100 again. You're going to do a very similar thing. But what I want you to do now is if the number is divisible by 3, print fizz. If the number is divisible by 5, print buzz. And if it's divisible by both 3 and 5, print fizz buzz. Okay. Okay. Is it not going to work? So, well, I'm just curious what oh, made you want to do uh, a mod 15? Because that's when it's divisible by both 3 and 5, right? So, I was like, first, we're going to do that for Fizz Buzz. And then the rest, it doesn't really matter what order, but like, just like Fizz and Buzz, right? I'm pretty sure this works, to be honest. You have a very clean solution if it's correct. This is like what you would get from a somebody who's smart at math. This is what you okay. would get from a programmer who's not like good at math, but he <laughs> he, he doesn't see the, that property, but you do something like this. What, what we can do to check if our solutions are equal, actually, I'll have you do this first on yours. So what I want you to do is I want you, instead of printing the values, I want you to stick them in a list. Like this? Exactly. And I'm going to just create my own list, and I'm just going to copy your code that you have here for me. Thank you so much for that. The list one is the two. Is, it, is that the bean? Do I need to like convert it to something? Nope. What do you have at the end of if statements? Oh, colon. Bam. Okay. So let's run this and see. That That's looking pretty good. So let me now run that equal. Nice. So this is what I would say are the easy way, and this is a great way to do it. I want to see if you can figure out a way to do it with a for loop. But I have to use range. You would not need to use range. I'll give you if... one hint. Remember earlier how I was using the doing it like this? Uh-huh. Instead of okay, range, so... you're going to be using something similar to that. Actually, I don't, I haven't given you actually you would use range i this actually might be hard for you to do now that i think about it i'll see if you can figure it out but i think i'm gonna have to give you some more hints but yes you oh would my use, god you would use range you would use range not, okay. not what i was saying here for i in range or am i supposed to do it just like if the list changes i have to adapt to it adapt if the list changes okay um i don't know <clears throat> Uh, or like... So how many times do you think you would need to loop? Three times. And how do you right? know that? Because there's three numbers in the list. Mm -hmm. So how would you do it so in a generic way if I were to say, be mean and add some things to the end? Boom. Uh, I just put like a thousand. And then it would stop, right? You would it stop? You could try that. Let's try that. List one i equals list two i. If true, okay. Do I need to put? Why is it true blue? That's a good question to ask yourself. Oh, good it wasn't. Job. Yep. It wasn't. Okay capitalize print equal. always ask yourself what's wrong if it's not the right color there's something okay, wrong okay. if it's not the right color else yes wait no okay wait we're not printing how do i no you can you can print and tell me whether it's equal or not that's good 
Okay, and then any right. But remember then up here, like... you told me whether it was equal or not. That's what I want. But then this is like every single value, right? Mhm. Mm so I should do like all of them together. If there's any falses, then I should. I should be like putting them on a list, and then if any of them is false, then I should print false, right? Or like not equal. That sounds interesting. Let's try it. Um, how do I see if there's a false in there? What do you like? How do you know if anything in the list is false? Yeah. Let's just print list three for now, and then we will see if list three looks correct, and then we will get there. Oh, parentheses. True is not defined. Do I need to name it something else? Well, you, you see how you have an uppercase T up here? Mm-hmm. And you have a lowercase T down there? Do I need to have a lowercase? Or... Mm-hmm. So it wasn't the right color. If you want to pass the value Boolean value, it needs to be uppercase. Okay. List index out of range. So I have to have, like, the exact number. Mm-hmm. And one Wait. Th <laughs> yeah, let's, Wait. Let's, let's start there. Let's start there. <laughs> What's going on there? Uh, okay, if 7 equals to 12, then it's false. If fa that is not true, then it should append false. Should it not? You are correct in that. That that 12 is not equal to 7. So I'll give you a hint. Notice what happens when I comment out this line and now run it again. Notice how you get the same result. This this line wasn't doing anything before. Okay. Okay. Do you know why? This might, this might get you closer to where you want to go. So now let's get all the numbers wrong. Now try running that and see what what we get true 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 <laughs> it's almost like it's not even taking into account what the values are in there like it's almost like it's only appending true you know what i mean mm. so let's let's take let's take this out for a second and let's let's do one last thing what what's gonna happen since we're only you can think of this like we're only doing one loop. What's gonna be inside of list three at the end of this? True. Why? Right. Because it's. Uh, do I need to change true to like if list one equals whatever, whatever? Exactly. Okay. Okay. Boom. Boom. Delete this, and then it should work. Okay. A boom. Yes. Yes. How do I stop it? How do, can I stop a loop early? Yes, yes, you can. And that's good thinking, actually. What happens if we get through all of them and nothing prints? That's a great question. So how would you handle this in a way where you know if you print it or not? Break and the... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. So what if I t gave you a hint here that you don't put the print in the for loop, but you put the print outside the for loop? I have to set a variable to something, and then we print the variable. Correct, right? Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. And then, right here, we print. Right? Is this right? And so right now, it's going to tell me, like, so let's run this. It tells me false, so the lists are not equal. Can you make it so it tells me, like, hey, Ben, the lists are not equal? Can I do this? I don't know. Can you? And then I need to put, like, parentheses around them, probably. Right? Okay. All right. Let's run it. Bam. And let's see if this... One, two, three... By the way, you passed your Amazon interview. Congrats. Uh, the lists are the same. Yay. Yay. Um, so are you ready to move to California and uh, collect 100K salary? No.
<laughs> computers uh, scare me. What are you talking about? The computers are scared of you. Also, you have been, like, I'm, breezing it's fine, through this. Because I live in Seattle. There's Amazon here, too. That's true. Actually, they're they're way bigger yeah. in Seattle than, than California. Yeah. I'm not sure why I said Cali. Maybe it's because your name had me thinking of Cali. 